Okay, so first of all, how have you guys been coping with lockdown? I mean, I know Chester's kind of locked down a lot of the time. He's locked down anyway, and he's made out of latex, so he's basically a PPE. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so he's how... like, I can't get coronavirus. Screw you guys. <laughs> uh, but um, no, it, it's you know, it's been, it's been. Uh, for us, it's been like amazing because on the one hand, uh, this puppet is a TV guy. That's like where he's closest and getting close and, and getting in there with weird shots and getting out of the weird shots and adding tech so I can, I can boo in there. And then suddenly, boom, I'm oh, explaining wow. my show to you. It's magic tricks and it's <laughs> making what you just saw here happen uh, yeah. required a, a streaming software it mm -hmm. required multiple camera angles. It required updating my lighting and my tech situation yeah. uh, and, and, and learning a whole new set of skills. So that's exciting uh, mm -hmm. because suddenly I have direct access to my audience. I don't have to ask ENCA or anyone, SABC. Uh, so I can stream straight to Facebook and my, my fans are all over, Jess's fans are all over. On the other hand, uh, you know, it's, it's terrifying because it's – what we're going through man south africans are struggling and it's a lot and as a performer not to get the ego validation of actual laughter plus the fear of will we be able to have an income you know yeah i mean there's a lot of talk about supporting artists helping them during lockdown have you had any financial support from government for instance well i mean i, mean, I, I see myself as sort of uh, I. I I think I need to work out how to do it myself. So I haven't really thought that hard about that. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, on the privilege scale, I, I, I just see myself as off the chart. So I just try not to, I, I just thought I must fix it myself, which is what I've done. So I've created yeah. a whole lot of shows that work in this world, which I'm really enjoying doing. I mean, I set up to go to Edinburgh Festival. I've got really great global management now. Uh, uh, to do this show at Edinburgh, it was going to be called White Noise. And that's obviously canceled. All our dates, our theater dates are canceled. But um, at, on the other hand, I've got a show called Zoom with a View, which is like a Zoom. We do this, but Chester produces his whole, uh, he'll interact, like he'll interview if you're the boss, he'll pop up and he'll chat to you and uh, like do, run a mock. So it's like a gate crashes Zoom meeting. So yeah. a whole lot of jokes about jogging and cigarettes and all that rubbish. And then we've got another show called South Africa Junk Book with Status which is a really fun political show that's purely about the political status quo. And the question about uh, the social contracts, you know, they talk about Financial Times of London says social contract has changed because you know, if you think about it, you can't catch poverty by touching someone, but you can catch COVID-19. So the world of middle class in the West has had to think about the status quo more. And then people go, it's changed. It's not new. It's the same rubbish as it always was, I think. But the proposition of caring about what poor people are going through, Sunny, which can you people often ask me, can you tell jokes now, Conrad? And I'm like, well, why? And then, people are dying. I was like, do you not know what's going on in this country? There are kids drowning poo at school. Like mm -hmm. this has been happening the whole time. We already have a tragic vibe. So um, on the other hand, it's been amazing. There's a lot to work with in the, the peer, people's fear. There's an interesting time to do work, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, tell me about the show. So it was going to be a live show, but things have changed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was meant to be at Monte Casino mm -hmm. uh, and at uh, Artscape for the next few weeks from around about now, actually. And obviously, that's all being put on hold. Yeah, yeah. So how can people watch it now? Uh, you go on to um, a cricket and you book it. And we've got uh, Stuart Taylor, you know, Stuart Taylor. Yeah. Uh, a comedian friend of mine. And we, we've uh, invested in the, in a, in a, it's like a webinar thing, but you can tailor it so that it feels like a show. So it's sort of like an online theater, which you're calling web oh, shows. Wow. And yeah, it's really fun. So yeah. at, w w the, they see people are just scared. They're like the weird idea of how do we interact with you? How do we like, what do we do? Like we don't go, but, but you click on a link, you get emailed a link, you buy the ticket of cricket, you get emailed a link at showtime, open up your device, make sure all the other devices off. And then you watch the show and these comments thing on the side over here. 
uh, that we have in all these things is a great way to interact and we talk to you and you can ask questions and, mm -hmm. and then you you know it's it's and it's got a lot of dynamism in that i can get much closer to you than i can in the theater it's got a much more personal feel i can you yeah. know that kind of uh which i find quite quite gratifying plus we can have a real conversation like we're having now and then jump back into a real theater mode so there's a amazing um i mean just look at that that's amazing you can't do that in a theater yeah so, so that's what happens and this show will be the racism show uh, uh dealing with racism but streaming so so how are you guys going to end racism can you tell us but <laughs> well the show is obviously ridiculous there are no white guys yeah. going to end racism it's a sort of mocking it's total mocking itself it's like is this preposterous that you think you can make any difference is the first concept i mean there's a point in the show where i apologize for apartheid and then just looks around and goes you see that fuck all changed nothing, nothing changed. changed yeah so so the show the show is based on the premise that um chester missing wants to do a talk uh on racism and how to end racism he's got this talk it's like a tape talk but before he can do the talk he needs to know if the guy making him talk is racist that, mm. that's we have to deal with that before we can do this Mm. And then that conversation is the whole show. Am I racist? Yeah. And Chester just climbs into each little bit of liberalism. And I have a lot of evidence to say I'm not racist. I have an award from Ahmed Katrada himself for fighting racism. I've gone to court fighting racism. But the truth is I am still racist and there's still things I need to work with and deal with. And, uh, and it's a very hard hurdle for a lot of white South Africans in particular. Mm. Uh, because we, we just we don't want to be seen as bad people but the thing is we're raised in a racist system it, it, it's like being sexist you're not bad it's just something that's a, how you got socialized so you know the best thing you could do is admit it and work out what's there we we, we have this weird relationship with it so chester deals hilariously with each one of those arguments but i don't see color some of my best friends are black i'm not racist but da, 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 da. i was born after apartheid yeah. Uh, you can't say I'm privileged. My family was poor. Uh, you don't know me. All of that, we get into nuanced detail, but he does it at me. He does, you know, bishops, boy, went to bishops. Yeah, I live in shame. And he, 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 he deals with the whole, you know, playing with dolls for a living. How entitled is that for like, any, yeah. like to, who would be encouraged <laughs> to do such a ridiculous job? You know how much support you have to have from your family for you to feel confident enough to pick up a toy and go, that's what I'm going to do. So that conversation uh, is, is what the show is about. And it's really fun. Yeah. Because to be honest, if I can just steamroll through, the, the, the problem <laughs> with South Africa, of course, is that, is that white people, we never, we never had the conversation, really, for a lot of white people. I mean, and our leadership was being useless. Uh, you know, F.W. de Klerk and Zilla, I don't know why we needed white lead people to guide it, but we somehow do. They haven't gone, guys, just acknowledge the bullshit, man. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that this was so unfair and it's still unfair. Mm -hmm. And apartheid wasn't about, you can't go to the beach, although that was part of it, of course, and the humiliation of that. It's the fact that we economically disabled people for generations and that hasn't changed. And so yeah. you can't say it's over till you deal with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're trying to get revenge. No, it's like wearing a kid in Crocs. If you see a kid in Crocs, it's the kid's fault it's wearing Crocs. It's mother made <laughs> it wear the bloody Crocs. The, it's shame. We're wearing Tupperware in his feet. And, and, but the truth is that and until we take off the Crocs, we're still collaborating. So this is like, guys, let's take off the Crocs, man. Yeah. Um, I remember... And you see how a little bit of humor there made it a little bit more accessible. Oh, yeah. It's a silly example, but we've yeah. got it immediately. Yeah. I mean, I was at the Mail and Guardian seven, eight years ago, and I remember, you know, you, Varashni interviewing you back then. And, I mean, you've been doing this for quite some time. Has... Has the conversation with your fellow whites changed? Do you, are, are we more receptive to it now or is it still the same? Uh, I think it's changed, to be honest. I think that there's, uh, there's a lot of, that's why you're seeing such a pushback from the alt-right, the Gareth Cliff world, the Helen Zilla world, because there's a, a lot of white friends and white people I know are like, you know, it would be great to just get honest about this. This is the monkey on our shoulder, man. This mm -hmm. this concept of, 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 of a, 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 you know, a, a crime against humanity happened. And why don't we just deal with it? And I think if people just don't have, it's part of what annoys me about Helen so much, is that you have power to just get people to just relax about this. 
and to just come together and be good mm. to do it. So for me, I think a lot of white people are actually quite keen. And I find that younger white people, especially with the gender conversation that's been going on, have gone, you know, the concept of wokeness, as much as it can be pretentious, is really helpful to get people to go, let's care about people. I mean, that's all you're being asked to do. Yeah. Let's just be decent. And I think a lot of younger, the same thing happened in Germany. The next generation were the ones that wanted to deal with the past and said, we cannot stand for that. And uh, I, I'm hoping people will, will, will come along. I mean, it is, it is a hard sell, Greg. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're talking about a party to white people. Come, pay, pay. I'm, I'm not. It'll be fun. feel a bit cut. Do you still engage with, with H. Zilla on Twitter and Gareth Cliff? Do you engage with them at all? Not, not really, uh, because it just turns into a war. They're never going to budge on their opinions, mm. because it's you know it's all economic. You 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 you're tied into a system where this is how you've established your brand, and changing it's going to really you've got to backtrack on all sorts of things to pull that off. Um, so I just you know my concept is like a is let the ones who are willing to hear come. Let me create a work that will make them come and it creates a space where people can feel safe to think. And anyone who's just going to be a, a Zilla or a Cliff, I just ignore. I didn't engage. I didn't. Previously, I've written letters back to Gareth going, what are you, why are you right? Who are you to write a letter to a president? No one asked. Like, you're a freaking, like you're a DJ. Next up, Watershed. Like, we don't care. So I haven't did a joke about it, but I, I don't. I've tried to sort of conceptually engage with Helen because in close up, uh, she's a lot more, that is going to sound crazy, but the face of it is more Afrocentric than Gareth. Like she's a better person when you talk to her. Mm. But okay. then she goes and says it gives you plumbing and then denigrates any idea of social consciousness. So mm. I've just given up. I've given okay. up on that. <laughs> Um, and I mean, you and Chester have survived a lot. We, we've all made it through the Zuma years. Um, and now we've got Ramaphosa. I mean, do you feel a little bit lighter? Do you feel a little bit better now? You know, it's a really perceptive question because that's exactly where the problem got with late night news is that we, we're continuously hitting the same wall, which is it's, 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 it's Jacob Zuma, there's complete denial, it's Stalingrad, it's, it's, there's no... And so, you know, I asked to interview Jacob Zuma a few times in the early years and actually got a yes for a, for a few days. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I got a yes. And then, uh, and then it, and then you can't interview him anymore because it's like so crazy. How do you, comedy re requires some level of rapport with the person you're talking mm -hmm. to. And it just, and the same thing is kind of getting there, you know, the same dynamic with Helen. It's like, ah. Uh, I'm going to really nail you for this conversation to happen. Uh, so, um, it, uh, yes, it's, it's, in, it's awesome. I mean, Ramaphosa, there's at least a more accountability. We're seeing scientists on TV with Zuel and Kiza. Um, you know, I, it's, 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 it, it, there's like a juice you can play with. Mm. It gets a little bit more difficult when it's an ace machashule because you've got to, like, it's, it's hard to be polite to ace if you've read enough about what's happened yeah. with him. So, uh, I, I'm sort of enjoying not being on the TV. The TV is always a complicated thing because I'd have politicians walk through with the Almost News last year and I'd literally have like a, a, a Air Motsualeri bumping into some other cabinet minister literally in the studio to see a puppet. Like they made a meeting and they arrived before at, at three because the puppet's talking to me at three. Yeah. And there it's very hard to not feel like you are collaborating when you talk to politicians, because if they're going to come in the room, you can't slay them mm. like you can if I just talk to the camera and go, you mm. screwed up. Yeah. If you get my just... Yeah. It's always yeah. Been that it's a bit of a it is easier now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you still, do you have a wish list of people you want Chester to talk to? Yeah. I mean, um, he's never spoken to Julius, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and of course, globally, I mean, imagine Chester interviewing Boris Johnson, you know, oh, or, right. you know <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> this, this clown personality, but I'm, I'm finding the live work very satisfying. Uh, uh, so it's, it's cause you can take people on a whole journey and you can structure this architecture, like this 
polish the ventriloquism takes a very long time to get the lips right. So, yeah. and the narrative right, because I've got to be the whole show. So I'm creating awesome arcs with Chester and I'm just building that. And I think the live streaming is, is very satisfying. So getting say a fun politician, like a Pumzele Van Damme or someone like that, um, and, and you just get them all, you know, the IFP or whatever, and you, you that little lady from the IFP, you get them in the room and you, you have an Alison that's on a Facebook live stream. It's ridiculous. People asking stupid questions. You're interacting with people live. It's just got so much juice. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about, I haven't had a chance yet, but getting into that world, because I think there's a lot more visceral conversation that can be had outside of media houses. I just, I just so tired of, of producers and and, 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 and and editors like this. No, aren't you gonna say that? Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Well, what, what? It's the truth. <laughs> <I'm> bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think those days are changing. I completely agree. Mm. But now you and, and Chesa being in lockdown together, it, has it been stressful? Do you pull each other's hair out? Do you have tips for survival? doesn't have any hair. <laughs> True. Does he pull your hair out? Yeah, he tries. He tries. Yeah, he's a chop. He's controversial because he says things that I can. Do you have to say that, dude? Do you have to go on Twitter and say that? Oh, you, you, you gotta. <sighs> yeah. And, uh, and and he's loud. So and I find it very hard not to make him loud. So I'm in this house booming around, and my poor wife, who's an amazing musician, uh, gear. She, then I'm like, ah, oh, you're gonna shout and scream with your, and I was like, oh, no, I need to, I need to calm him down a bit. I, I know. I know. <laughs> so yeah, it gets a bit like hectic. So I'm looking forward to just doing politics because this, uh, the race stuff uh, this week was a, a lot. I, had, I, it's, it's also quite emotional. It's, a, it's a lot of work, and I mean, it's my entitlement that feels like it's a lot of work because compared to what people of color have to hold down and not go, you know, deal with constantly, it's nothing. But um, I, I, like, I get excited and I do it and then I need to retreat just into fun politics in order just my psyche. It's, you mean, you know how it is. I'm here, let me show you where I am right now. See, this is what the tech can do. Uh, I, this is a back room at our place. Outside is like a little bit of an area, uh, little bry things. Uh, that looks neat. Total mess, total mess, total mess. And that's my controller mm -hmm. so I can change cameras. There you are. Hello. And uh, that's my little thing. So, so getting this working and, and, and it has been stressful. I mean, I, I just fought through a Wi-Fi router against the wall the other day. Yeah. So that with the controversial puppets and, uh, it, it, you know, being in relationships in this time is hard because you just thought there's no outside. What would you like people to walk away with after the show or the conversation you'd like them to have? Um, yeah. So let's make it all, oh, where's my picture? No, the picture got stolen. Oh, bastard. Um, what I'd like to, the show is, is, is meant to just inspire a little bit more self-reflection and a little bit more listen before you talk. Hmm. Just so that that seed gets planted. I mean, I, I'm not the truth. I, I don't know what the truth is. I'm just saying my version. But, but I think there is a massive gap for this conversation to happen. I think that we're hurting a lot of our friends of color by not having this conversation. So I'm hoping that we will just hope to be better people and just shift it just a little bit closer to, you know, the truth is a lot of the world is having this conversation. I mean, Canada is going through the reconciliation. They did a whole... Reconciliation Commission, they're dealing with land. Australia has massive protests against Australia. I don't know if you, do you know about Australia Day? Um, kind of. There's also the They celebrate the day white people stole Australia. It's just madness. It's a public <laughs> holiday. It's every single year. It's like yeah. so offensive. It's like crazy offensive. So, but the left in Australia is pushes hard, like amazingly. And so in some parts of the world, Certain types of racism are just impossible to do. Mm -hmm. uh, in you know, in the, in the liberal sense, the Edinburghs and some part, most of and huge pieces of Latin. So, in that way, I think that we can move forward, uh, and and I'm hoping that will happen. I don't think my show will do it, but you know, I'm saying what I need to say, and I think it, I just that you can go to one place and get an understanding of why race doesn't exist, why racism does. That is shaped opportunity. Nobody who is racist thinks that they're racist. So the fact that you don't think you're racist doesn't mean you're not. 
that, it, that it's not your fault if you learned racism because we were indoctrinated into a racist society. I didn't ask to be born white in South Africa, but I was mm -hmm. in the, like, you know, I grew up in the eighties. So there's no way to avoid that. And to, to walk out with a, it's almost freeing. Cause then like, I don't have to be scared of getting it wrong because if I get it wrong, I'll just fix it. I'm getting it wrong already. So it, the problem is most of racism, the most of the hurdle in finding racism is people denying that it exists. So once we admit that the racism is there, that, there are no white kids drowning in poo, you know, in school toilets. It doesn't happen. Only black kids drown in poo in school toilets yeah. in this country. And that the outrage of a white kid had happened at Wanderbosch Boys, it would be insane. So that that exists and just to acknowledge it, I think allows a space for other conversations to happen. Like the ANC is screwing up. Now you don't sound like a racist because you've dealt with your own rubbish before you go. Now you don't sound like you just hate black people. You're yeah. making a fair point. It just helps the conversation. So I'm hoping something like that, or just to get money for the Kachada Foundation, 30% goes to the Kachada Foundation. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, Connor, are we gonna see Chester today or? Is he here? I don't know where he is. Are you here? Yes. Go away. No, we're here, we're here with Greta with the City Press. I, oh, I like that. <laughs> oh my God. Hang on. Oh, Greta. Greta. Dad. Oh God. Oh, there, hi, there you are. Oh, you have locked in there the whole time, Greta, the whole freaking time. Guys, not okay. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Have you, self, have you been self-isolating and keeping social distance? Uh, yes, uh, because I, I live in a suitcase, Greta. Uh, mm. But you're a journalist at, uh, at, at, at Mest, Nasper, so you know what that's like. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Of course, Becca has you guys locked away. I know. No, it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a long journey. I mean, it's been confusing. What's going on? Are we all going to die? Has Helen Zilla lost her mind? What? I thought Zol was Dacha. No, no, it's, it's also sick. I don't know. What does Zol? I want to Zol you. I, I mean, just learning about our country, Greg. It's been great uh, that we come together and the solidarity fund, but it's also horrific to see how careless we can be about people's extreme poverty. I mean, 50% of South Africa lives on 40 rand a day. I mean, mm. Nando's meals have more privilege than they do. Yeah, yeah. And do you make sure that Conrad um, uses the hand sanitizer before he... Um, sticks his hand in my ass. Yeah. Because he sticks his hand in my ass, Greta. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sure you do. I know you do. <laughs> And she's the, it's dirty. Yeah. But I can't get coronavirus, so I don't know why people ask me this question. Yes, because you're plastic. If he goes, I'll just get another ventriloquist. I, I'm going to be, Jackson and Tembu phoned me actually last week with a new <laughs> job. Fantastic. And I'm going to be the minister of vibrators. <laughs> um, mm. And the corporate gigs, are you, are, you, do, are you preferring doing those ones with the, as over Zoom, or do you like being in the theater like live? You know what's fun about the uh, live is always the best because you can connect with people, but but you know, it, it's great to connect with people in this weird new way. I can get really close to you, and you can we can we can sniff each other, Greta. We can, we can get really creepy close. You're yeah, so you know, gonna wake up at two in the morning. Oh my gosh, Chester got close. Uh, so that's fun, and I can talk to individuals. I can add graphics. I can add. I can add other. I can add other camera angles, Greta. I can add other camera angles if I can just get it working. I, I can. I can go back. Go down. Uh, you know. So it, it's it's actually more fun than you would think. Yeah, it's been fun talking. I'm to gate you. crashing Zoom meetings. Like if you have a Zoom meeting, I'll just gate crash for money. I'll take money. Then you get the money. Just do the thing. Will you, you honestly money, do Greta. that? Will you honestly do that? Can people, what, great crash Zoom meetings. Can people pay you to yes, do, I do that? that? It's a show called Zoom with a View. Yes. Mm. I'm going to book you to do that my next meeting. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> be there going, where's Chris Baker? Where is he? Give me his money. Give me his apartheid money. I want your apartheid money, man. Joke is not apartheid money. Unfortunately, Chris is never in the meetings that I'm in. We'll yeah, I know what that's like. You're, uh, <laughs> there's puppets, and there's puppets, and there's puppets, and there's Greta. <laughs> yeah. But I love you guys. Though. City Press is one of my favorite publications. Really does great work. I always uh -huh. love the vibes. And all. Yeah. I'm sucking up, but it's also true. No, we love you as well. Thank you for mm. giving us your time today.
Thanks, Greta. And come, get people to book. Uh, you go to Quickets, right? You go to Quickets. And uh, I forgot to say that 30% of the proceeds go to the Katrada Foundation. Uh, so it's 75 Rand, but 30% of that, they fight racism, teaching kids. They're really amazing. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can interact. And I'm going to have, probably have a panel after the show where we can talk about how guilty we all feel. I'm joking. Thank you, Greta. <laughs> Cool, Next Friday, hey, 29th, go down. 29th of May uh, at 8.30 p.m., just because people forget to book. Cool, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. 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 No, don't talk to him. <laughs>